So guys, right, how do we feel the downswing? I'm going to show you how we can really feel the downswing. Now, the last 10 weeks, I was in Australia doing videos and hitting a lot of golf balls, and I really, really fell in love with this thing because it's changed my downswing, right? And I mean it, honestly, the hanger, this thing is unbelievable. I'm going to show you how I use it and how I recommend it for my clients because it's probably a little bit different, but it's unbelievable what it does for your compression, your plane, the, the delivery of the golf club and the club head. And we're going to talk about that before we move on to some drills for everyone in this video and we can really get an understanding. Now what I do, it takes like, like a minute to set it up, right? But I like to set up the ring about three finger widths away from my forearm, right? Now, I don't know about you, but I estimate about 70, 80% of the time I've practiced in my life, I've just practiced the wrong things. You know, when you look back and you think, oh God, or you think you're doing something, but you're not doing it. That's the worst thing. You think you're doing something, but you're not. When you can actually physically feel something touch your body, you know you're doing it, right? That's, that's the difference. And that's when, you, I don't know how much time you've got left, but I'm not wasting like my time anymore, I'm eating balls, is unbelievable. Now when you get up to the top of the swing and the ring touches your arm, you've got your left wrist in a really strong position, but it also gets the plane of the club on a, in a great place. If, that, if we lose that ring there, you can see my left wrist gets extended and that's what's happened to me in the latter part, not noticing, just losing that extension and then that extension staying like that and just getting a bit steep coming down, it takes a long time to shallow the plane. And now there's hundreds and thousands and literally hundreds of thousands of golfers around the world, amateur players, and they don't know they're doing it. And their lead wrist moves it slightly into an extended position, which opens up the face. It might not come down steep, it probably will. But even if it splits through the forearm, the club face is open. That's not touching, that is. And when they get a slightly open face, they flip stand up, lose shaft lean. Sound like you? All right, so when we get this lead wrist in a strong position, we get it in a more flexed position. The thing is, well, you wanna maintain this ring on your arm. There's no point in getting up at the top and then losing it. You wanna maintain that. And this is what flattens the shaft, gets it to split through the forearm. And this is how we get the club face in a stronger position to get shuffling. So people, before we have a look at my swing using the hanger, let's have a look at some of the great ball strikers out there and some evidence-based material. As we see the shaft flatten, have a look at this. See the club head, see the shaft flatten and move through that trail forearm. Now what this does, people, is it brings the club head in behind the hands. Okay, this is a really important part to notice. Have a look at Rory McElroy here. Exactly the same move. Now these guys, right, the closer you get to this, if you can just keep this hanger connected to your lead forearm, you're gonna get the perfect delivery into the back of the golf ball. It's really gonna help the plane of the club. So you're gonna get the path and the club head all in one. This is such an important area. Now even when we look at someone like Tom Watson here, now see that lead wrist is actually cupped. You see that? Now watch what great players do. And this is why we don't need to swing up like this higher and we can see what Tom Watson does. I don't even know if he would know that he's doing this, but you can see him bow that lead wrist down. Now, if we zoom in now and have a look at that wrist, it's flexed. And this is the thing that these great players do. They all end up in the same position. So every single player that we see, all great ball strikers are in this position. And you should be filming your swing with your mobile phones, guys. It's really, really important to get in there and have a look and work with evidence-based instruction like we're showing people on worldclassgolf.com or swing analyst lessons. I'm helping people from everywhere. It doesn't matter what style of swing you have. It's this club head between 12 and one, getting the club to come in level slightly behind the hands. There's your delivery position. If you're not using track man flight scope, you're gonna get great numbers from this position anyway. Now. One of the really, really interesting areas when we're looking at amateur golfers is when we look at the right wrist. Now have a look at this just for a second. Let's scroll up to the top. This is important. The difference between professional and amateur golfers, and it's not just positive thinking. Right? Have a look at the right wrist, the trial wrist there of the professional. Have a look at the trial wrist here of the amateur. There's so many people in this position. And then actually what they do is the lead wrist moves into a cup position. Now the club face is open. See the difference in the club head here? See how this club head is in a stronger position? You see how this one's open? All right, now we're seeing this a lot and then there's no angle. Now one of the really, really important areas here to notice is this right wrist. Watch this, because I'm sure you haven't seen this before. If I draw a line down this right wrist, 
right to where it points outside the ball. Now have a look at this from the professional. If I draw a line down the back of this wrist here, it points in between the feet and the golf ball. We're going to be looking at, at that more in the future, but this is your delivery position. And this is where the hanger, keep the hanger connected to your lead arm. And this is going to get your wrist positions, your delivery. It's such a great place. Now let's have a quick look at my swing here. You're going to find this interesting before we move on to some drills. So guys, right before we move on, before we move on to some drills as some exercise, have a look at these two swings here. Now on the left, I wasn't hitting the ball very well. This is a while back. And the one on the right, I was hitting it really, really well. And really solid. Now you can see this lead wrist is more extended or cupped. And the swing's a little bit more narrow. All right, see where the hanger on here, and see where the lead wrist is, it's really flat, the right wrist is a better angle. So this swing on the on the left here, it, it comes in way too steep. Now, I don't mind showing it, it's not too bad around this area, and it's, I mean, it's hit a bit in the toe. I start to pull the ball a little bit, and it feels a bit clunky, where this one on the right is hit really, really good. So when the, when the club comes down, it shallows through the forearm, see that? And this way, it's in a stronger position, and I can move through the ball, and it's just, I can hit it really solid from there. And it's just amazing, and I think once you guys get in there and start filming your swings here, you'll start to see some incredible moves. Right, let's get further on into the video. We look at some really exciting drills and exercises, and how we can feel this downswing position. For us to get that compression, right, to get in there and stay on top of the shot, and get that shaft length, this face has to come down. It can't come down like this, and this is where this ring, this feedback of simply maintaining this pressure against your arm at the top is unbelievable. So guys, all right, let's have a look how I, well, let's have a look how we can use this thing, all right? So what I like to do, as I said, I like to get this hanger set up on the side. So I've got around three fingers. You can have two. I just like to exaggerate them. I like to exaggerate stuff when I'm practicing. So then you get up to the top of your swing, right? And just let it, let the ring touch your arm a couple of times. One, two. Now you hold, try and hold the pressure of the ring in your arm. And you just, you, your changeover is just so good. It just helps you really shallow and flatten that shaft. But you're also in a strong position. So it's much easier to get around that 12 degrees of shaft lean that you need at impact. It's, it's getting the club head in a stronger position. All right, so get up at the top, ring touches the arm one, two, just feel it remaining there on the arm. And then move through the golf ball and you can feel in the latter part of the through swing that the ring will actually touch the right forearm so that you're not over rotating. I know a lot of amateurs aren't really over rotating, but they have when they've they've had a poor backswing and they bring the right shoulder over. So through the golf ball, you can get this ring to touch the inside of the trail forearm and it creates really good structure. It's a good way to pick up your width. So a great way to get your wrist alignments working like top players. Up to the top, keep the ring on your arm, move through. And um, guys, this is great feedback. And when you film your swing and you look at it, and you look at it down the line, it will look so much better, I guarantee it. So guys, when you're hitting like hold off shots, like three quarter shots here, this is when I don't allow the hanger to touch my trail forearm on the way through. So you, you sort of bring the flight down here. It's got a lot of compression, it's held off, but you have to get the ring to stay on, really on that left forearm with some pressure. When you're hitting knockdown shots, you're better off getting that face even in a more downwards position because you want to get a bit more shaft lean on it. And when you get more shaft lean, you need a stronger face so that you're not opening up the face at impact. And so on the way through, I sort of like to try and keep the hanger pretty close to that left forearm to really hit that held off punch lower flight that's not hit by the wind. And we need that shot, you know, with your nine irons, your eight irons, you don't want to fly them up really high all the time, do you? You need to be able to hit that three quarter punch, sort of just, and rip it into the green. So get the ring to touch the forearm here, and then on the way through, 
sort of holding it off just a touch. It's just left my forearm, the ring there. It's really, really close. So you're getting better pressure on the golf ball. And I mean, you can use that also when you're looking at your pitch shots and you're letting this ring stay then a little bit more connected here on your pitch shots through the ball. That one's really connected there. So this device, you can use it for certain shots, certain styles, but if you're like freewheeling and just letting it go, then the ring will touch the other forearm.